Hi, I'm Michael Monti, I'm the Champlain Housing Trust CEO. Thank you for coming. It's so many of you and so many of you who have done so many different things and so many levels for this project. I have to, I've been asked to do one thing. Are you ready? Look up there. Look up there. You good? Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yep, that's, I, we could be done with that if you want to. Um, so uh, today, today we are celebrating the, uh, the beginning of construction of 38 permanently affordable uh, apartments in downtown Burlington, uh, a new veteran center and a, and a space for the Burlington's Community Justice Center. Um, so let me just say redeveloping a small site like this in the middle of Burlington doesn't come without its challenges. Um, we began this journey three and a half years ago. Uh, and and uh, when the Howard uh, Plan BFW Post approached Champlain Housing Trust in the city of Burlington uh, to discuss the redevelopment of the property while preserving access to the center for veterans. That was key. The initial vision developed into what was being put into action today um, with the demolition of the uh, Parmelo VFW building that was built 30 plus years ago. Uh, when completed, when completed, post apartments will include 38 apartments, nine set aside for people experiencing homelessness, five of those who will be preferences for those who are veterans. Uh, the VFW and the Community Justice Center will be on the ground floor, taking up about 6,800 square feet, VFW on one side, Community Justice Center on the other side. So this will be a forward looking kind of program and building. Uh, this is a complex project with 19 different funding sources, just crazy, um, including significant environmental remediation um, and additional engineering costs because of the ravine sewer. An additional $1.6 million went in for, uh, for all of that. So I, I just wanna uh, thank all of the partners who helped make this a possibility and to especially the CHC staff uh, who has worked hard uh, to get this done. So thank you. Um, and I only see a few people here who maybe are just visiting and didn't have anything to do with this. So thank you all, okay? Um, so uh, it's um, my pleasure to introduce the senior senator uh, from Vermont. Very senior. Thank you. <laughs> Getting senior every day. I called, I called Peter Welch the junior senator and he looked up at me and went, um, um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing about Bernie is that he's always supported veterans. This is deep in his DNA. And he has been a strong believer also of permanently affordable housing. So it's, it's my pleasure to introduce Senator Sanders. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, and let me thank the Champlain Housing Trust for all that they do it. I trust that all of you know that what the Champlain Housing Trust does is not only significant here in Vermont, it has become a model for housing throughout the United States and in fact, throughout the world. That's a big deal. And I wanna thank Nancy Owens, uh, the president of Evernorth. Again, I think Vermont is one of the leading states in this country in understanding that there's a desperate need for affordable housing, and we wanna to make, to the best degree we can, that housing nonprofit, not having landlords and uh, speculators ripping off people. Uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, I wanna thank the VFW. Uh, as the former chairman of the Senate Veterans Committee, I am more than aware of the extraordinarily important work the VFW does in making sure that our veterans get the benefits, benefits and the services that they deserve and they need. Uh, and I'm delighted that you will have a new center right here. So VFW, thank you very much for what you do. Uh, as Mike indicated, to build anything in America today is a very complicated process. We only had 19 funders of this project. Um, and one of them certainly has been the federal government. I know the state and the city have also uh, been involved. So all that I want to say is something 
uh, that you all know. Uh, we have a major housing crisis in Burlington, in Vermont, and throughout this country. We have over 600,000 Americans who are homeless. We have many, many millions of people who are spending 40, 50, or 60% of their limited incomes on housing. So we need a revolution in this country in building low income and affordable and senior housing. And by the way, I was, I was very pleased to see just today uh, that the Vice President Harris indicated that she wants to see three million more units of low income and affordable housing built in the next several years. That's a significant step forward. So what today is a celebration at a time when Burlington and Vermont have a real need for affordable housing, where we need to house the homeless, where we need to make sure that every veteran in the state gets decent housing, where we need to make sure that our veterans community have good places to meet and to do their work. This is an important step forward. So once again, let me thank everybody involved in this complicated process. Let's hope that this is a beginning. Let's hope that we're gonna continue to go forward and building in building the affordable housing this state and the country needs. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Senator. Let me um, take a moment to thank and uh, recognize some of our legislative leaders who are here. And Jesus, there's so many of you, and thank you for showing up. <laughs> there really are so many of you here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I think at the last uh, groundbreaking I did, I said um, we should do more of these. So we did. Uh, but seriously, we need to do many more of these. Um, Senator just sort of underwrote that uh, support, uh, emphasized that. Uh, but your support over the past several years has been critical. And your support over the next few years will be very important for us to be able to do more and more uh, affordable housing. So let me just recognize uh, President Pro Tem Phil Baruth, Speaker Jill Kroninsky, Jesus, uh, Rep Representative Tom Stevens, uh, Di uh, Representative Diane Lan Lanfear, uh, Representative Teresa Wood, uh, Representative Tiff, my, I can say that because she's my rep and my neighbor, um, Rep Representative Mary Catherine Stone, uh, your district now, yes, yeah, um, and uh, Senator Keisha Rahm, uh, Hensdale, uh, as well as uh, David Chair, who's here from uh, Becca Balance Office. We appreciate it. And Emily Kresno, you showed up too. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate all of you. Uh, I know that some of you are running uh, for office, and I appreciate that you're up through opportunity to do that. Um, when you win I'll, and you come, I'll recognize you. Um, uh, so, um, being the mayor of Burlington is probably one of the most difficult jobs in Vermont right now, I would say. Um, we know that. And stepping up to that challenge uh, is Burlington's newly elected mayor, M. M. Mulvaney Stanek. Did I get it right? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, did I get it right? And I was like, yeah, it is. I think it's actually the hardest job in Vermont, but you know, <laughs> four months in, I can say that, right? All right. Well, welcome everyone to the downtown. Okay, let's break the mic. Um, welcome downtown here to the city of Burlington. I'm Emma Mulvaney Stanek, the new mayor of Burlington. It's such an honor to be able to come to celebratory events like this. Uh, there's a lot of positive things happening in our beautiful city, and this will become one of those real gems right here in the downtown corridor of Burlington. So good morning. I am happy to be here today to celebrate a milestone in our collective effort to build more affordable housing here in Burlington and to recognize our continued commitment to end homelessness and ensure housing is a human right. Creating housing that is safe, affordable and accessible is a top priority for my administration. And I deeply appreciate the collective work done over these past four years by CHT, the VFW and community partners to envision a modern community centered space, one that will continue to serve as an important gathering place for our veterans here in Burlington, provide permanently affordable housing in our community and offer a new home for our, our lovely and amazing and hardworking community justice center right here in the downtown. 
The inclusion of services here, including those provided by Burlington CJC, is another key component that advances the goals of my administration, which is to improve community safety and make sure that the city has more, is more affordable and more inclusive for everyone here. It truly takes a village to see these projects through to groundbreaking and completion. And I wanna recognize the team in our community, uh, community economic development office, CETO, our director, Brian Pine is here in the fabulous hat, by the way, over there. Um, and former, yep. It's good to do appreciations. This work is hard, right? And our, and our former mayor, uh, Moreau Weinberger, are you out here somewhere, Moreau? Are you hiding? Is he somewhere? I saw a gesture somewhere. Well, anyway, if he's not here, um, I really want to appreciate the former mayor Weinberger for committing a variety, apparently 19 funding sources, helping to help um, find those funding sources, which totaled nearly $3 million to help get the post apartments to this point. I also want to thank uh, the senator who was just here a moment ago, Senator Bernie Sanders, for his support in securing essential federal funding for this project and for his ongoing and deep commitment to serving veterans in our state. I also want to recognize uh, our hardworking team at the Department of Public Works. And the reason being is that we are standing in a portion of the city, whether you realize it or not, there's a great Stuck in Vermont um, video on this you should see. We're standing in an area that used to be a ravine. And for those of us who have been alive in the last 100 years or so, you wouldn't think about it much. But it is, it is proven to be one of the most challenging parts of this project. And DPW has shown that they have uh, creative um, thought, will, engineering to help reroute the Burlington's 150-year-old ravine, again, that's, that's running beneath us, the sewer which is key to making sure that not only this site, but future sites in the downtown corridor can develop and we can place the kinds of development that we need right in the downtown core. This groundbreaking is a powerful reminder of the progress we can make towards our housing goals when local, state, and federal partners work together to make projects like this one feasible. I wanna close by expressing my gratitude again to CHT and Evernorth for their continued commitment to building affordable housing right here in Burlington. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, uh, before I introduce uh, the current commander, I, I just want to say uh, this. I, I met Michelle Kyber about three and a half years ago, um, and she won me over right away. Uh, she asked for a meeting with me and Will Clavel um, to talk about what could be done here and what was the right thing to do. And her determination and was contagious. Um, and uh, the BFW has been and will be a great partner, uh, one that I think will result in a great benefit uh, to this community. But with that, let me introduce the current commander of the VFW, Mark Hughes. Hey, good morning. Uh, at a time like this, uh, we could use some good news. Wouldn't you agree? So I'm, I'm delighted uh, to be here with you today uh, to be able to celebrate, to celebrate something today in the city of Burlington. So this is an amazing, amazing, amazing project. And there's so many things coming together. It's kind of like uh, catching some lightning in a bottle. So I'm, I just got um, a couple of quick things and I want to go straight to Michelle because Michelle is the one I think you want to hear from. Now listen, first of all, happy Bennington Battle Day. So I, I would just want, I want folks who are veterans, if you could just roll your, uh, just. Put your hands up, please, those who are veterans. I want to acknowledge my veterans. Can you please give it up for our veterans? Clap for the veterans. That's a big deal. And, and the thing here is, is what I really truly believe about what we're doing right now more than anything is, is this is about people. This is about people. This is about people. So when you start to think about the work of the veterans of foreign wars, and by the way, our, our death has been growth, grossly over-exaggerated. We're not going anywhere. 782 is here. We're still alive. We're not going anywhere. Okay? I can promise you that. Uh, it, you think about the transformative work of the CJC, Rachel, with the restorative practices that are happening over there and the diversion programs and all of this, the community, the people. And you think about housing, say it after me, housing, Housing, okay. housing, housing, and housing. So this is, this is so amazing. It's so amazing to be here. I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, some of the, I think some of the most awesome partners that we could work with. I'm, come on, you're with Mike at CHT. You got 
Emma here is running the city. You got, I mean, this is just an amazing team of folks that we've had the opportunity to work with. It has been incredibly difficult, but the only person that can tell you the most about that is my colleague, Michelle. Michelle Caver, the previous commander, the adjutant, the quartermaster, and everything else. Please give it up for my colleague, my comrade, Michelle Caver. <laughs> Mark really knows how to warm the crowd up. So uh, maybe what I have to say will not be as exciting, but it is from the heart. Because this day symbolizes to me community, joy, dedication, and appreciation. And it started with a conversation through the previous mayor Mayor Weinberger and his chief of staff in a conversation with Will Clavell. Will, can you come up? I don't know if everybody knows who you are. And Michael Monte, which we know everybody knows Mike. <laughs> but what I wanna what I wanna emphasize is that they didn't know me. And I didn't look the part of someone who had a vision that they should believe in and put resources behind. And they listened to me that day and it was re respectful exchange between us. And as soon as Mike agreed that it was worthwhile to explore the vision that I had shared with him on behalf of many veterans who took a lot of time out of their day to talk about how can VFW Post 782 who celebrated its centennial in 2021, or excuse me, 20, yes, 2021, how could we be relevant in the veteran community for another 100 years? And what we decided, and it was hard, and it wasn't popular, because any big change, the bigger the change, the harder it is for everyone to accept. But what we decided is that we needed to partner with the community in which we were serving. We bring a lot of strengths from our time in military service. And the biggest strength that I've gained is to understand when it is time to ask others to partner with you. That's right. Not to just give you things, but to ask for your wisdom and your insight about what is possible, what can we do. And that's the conversation that I had with Will and with Mike. But there was someone else that I had been trying to chase for a couple of years. And when he finally was able to answer the call, he showed up not only once, but several times to support us. Mr. Ernie Pomelo, will you please come up? Will you please come up? I don't know, everyone may know your name. They may not know what you look like. Handsome man. Thank you, <laughs> very kind. Not only did Ernie provide financial support to our organization to help keep the VFW strong and, and keep the building functioning so we could have uh, many community events and programming, by the way, in case you didn't know this, Ernie and his dad, um, Anthony Pomerleau, built the, the building that is no longer here now. So that was 40 plus years ago. So thank you for what you did during that time, which was uh, give this building to us in exchange for a building that, we no, that was no longer functioning for us. And so we do appreciate all the support that you give in those 40 plus years you and your dad to make sure that the VFW community could still continue serving and completing many, many, many acts of selfless service within the veteran community and beyond. So thank you very much, Mr. Ernie Pomerleau. <laughs> Financial support is a great, wonderful way to show thanks but I wanted Ernie's mind and I wanted to sit down with him and to better understand how we could move forward. 
when folks say thank you for your service, it's always a challenge for many veterans to know what to say. I, I typically say thanks for your support. What I really want is a relationship with other community leaders to help veterans to thrive in a way that matters, that helps not only to uplift the veteran community, but also uplift the surrounding community. We're in this together. And if I can bring and other veterans can bring the many things that made us successful as veterans into the community, then we want to highlight that. And we want to figure out how to leverage those talents in the community. And so Ernie, you are one of the biggest supporters um, of the VFW over the years. And so we are grateful and we hope that our relationship with you, our partnership with you continues. Thank you. So as I think about the ways that I could talk about what it means to me for us to get here today, what I will say is to my veteran brothers and sisters and family members, there's three young people in the back who gave up their Saturdays to help clear out this building. Wave your hand, because I know you're not coming up. <laughs> Sabine, Evangeline, and Ethan, tell us, and their moms there. Thank you so much for giving of your time when you didn't need to, but they did. The veterans who are here, we have this department commander, our state commander, Commander St. Ange, and we have our auxiliary that is sprinkled throughout with the blue shirts. And we have Joe Gilman who led the organization for many years. And we have Kevin, Kevin Fleming, who was the previous post commander. I'm gonna make sure he's acknowledged. Jim Bonoit, Paul Bonoit. The Benoit brothers, <laughs> they dedicated a lot of their time behind the scenes, things that people don't know that happened to help us get to this moment. And there's a special someone who absolutely does not want to come up here, but it is through a lot of sweat and tears over the years that the VFW stood strong. Bob Colby, are you willing to step forward? You probably can't see Bob. Bob, can you raise your hand? <laughs> Bob, we have had a lot of time together and I know you in a way that many do not know you. And I, I am so grateful to see you here and I hope that you are present in our transformation into our new VFW post. We are not a veteran center. We will be doing, we will be offering programming similar to a center, but I want to make sure the veterans are not worried about our identity. We will remain as a members of, of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, VFW Post 782. And Lou Amen. Hanlon, Lou, I am so sorry that I, I missed you up front, but Lou has been an active supporter. Lou doesn't mind coming up front. I, I wasn't asking for that, but, but that you're here. Turn around, let everybody see your wonderful self. And as I had a wonderful partnership with Mark and the other veterans I named, and Bob, especially Bob, I want folks to know that I have so much affection, so much admiration for the CHT staff. No matter what anyone, how anyone else might describe them, I will tell you that they have been dedicated partners. I have been confused often, and they have, with kindness, helped me to see the way forward. And I appreciate that so much. And Miranda, do you mind coming up front? Because we could not have done this without you. You are an absolute amazing professional, and I appreciate you endlessly. You 
And then there's Amy and, and uh, Kirsten as well, who are not here. But I just want to acknowledge in this moment, because it's significant, this is life changing for the VFW and the members that um, loved the building we were in for so many years. And I wish that we could have kept it. It does mean something. And no matter what change brings, it is hard but it also can be beautiful and promising and help us to serve in this community for another hundred years. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, thanks, Michelle. You could tell why you could fall in love with the vision that Michelle has uh, or has now for the VFW Post. Um, we do a lot of great things in our community and our go-to and reliable partner in many of these initiatives uh, is Evernorth. And so Nancy Owens is the CEO and president of Evernorth and here to speak to us. All right, shortest one. <laughs> Good catch. Oh, thank you. All right. So, I'm Nancy Owens, <laughs> the president of Evernorth. We're the co-owner and co-developer of Post Apartments with the Champlain Housing Trust, bringing these new homes and new services to Burlington. For 35 years, Evernorth and CHC have been working together to build affordable housing in the Champlain Valley region. And we've created over 2,100 apartments together over our long partnership. So it is a deep and long partnership. <laughs> Um, I was so pleased to have Senator Sanders here. I'm sorry he couldn't stay, but he has done so many things over the decades to make lives better um, for everybody in Vermont. And one of the key things um, among hundreds of things he did was to spearhead the National Housing Trust Fund Act, which was a p key piece of legislation um, that has made a world of difference, not just in Vermont, but for the whole country. And Mayor Mulvaney Stanek, thank you for being with us here today for the support of all the city staff, for the funds provided to make this new housing happen. Um, I really hope we'll be celebrating a lot more groundbreakings together. So um, the funding and financing uh, totaled $24 million from a mix of public and private sources. And uh, Evernorth is providing 6.4 million in investment capital to the post apartments through our Evernorth 481 fund, which uh, TD Bank is the sole investor of. And TD Bank, again, is a, an amazing partner in Vermont in the region. They're a longtime investor, and they have, they have invested over $350 million in affordable housing through Evernorth over the last 30 years. So again, other strong partners at the table. There are, as people have mentioned, 19 distinct sources of financing for <laughs> ranging from $75,000 to 6.4 million. And that is a fact which just hints at some of the challenges it takes to develop affordable housing in these times of great need. And so I wanna acknowledge a few of those funders, you know, starting with the congressionally directed spending, which was provided by Senator Sanders through HUD, and then moving to our state and local colleagues at the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, um, the Vermont Economic Development Authority, the City of Burlington, all of who pieced together a wide array of federal programs. I also want to mention, oh, we're getting so loud. Services. Yeah, important. it That's is. We're downtown. And we're downtown. Yeah. Um, they all piece together a wide array of federal programs, ARPA dollars, um, state and local trust fund dollars, brownfield funding to support the project. Union Bank purchased the state tax credits. VHFA provided a permanent loan. The Burlington Housing Authority is providing voucher support for low-income tenants. And other funders you know, include the Burlington Electric Department, NeighborWorks, and the Chittenden County Regional Planning Corp. It's a tremendous team, as others have alluded to. And I, over the past four years, 
you know, the state and the city have prioritized affordable housing in some different ways because of the access of substantial federal resources that were made available, the, the ARPA funds, right? We've been financing a lot of housing. Those funds are, are nearly all committed. And while we're gonna continue to see groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings based on that funding availability, if we don't continue to bring new resources to the table, organizations like Champlain Housing Trust and Evernorth are not gonna have that pipeline of new projects and new housing that we so desperately need, and we are not gonna get out of this housing crisis. You know, there are simply not enough homes for people at all income levels to live in, and the lack of housing is a major contributor to rising rents, right, supply and demand. And for those people with the fewest choices and the lowest income, it's a real struggle. This building, our building that will be built here, is one small but really important response to the city's housing crisis. And it will be a haven for our neighbors, relatives, friends, colleagues who are without a home, who are paying so much for housing each month that, each month that they're left not able to afford food, medication, and other essentials at the end of the month. And this building is also part of a climate change solution with a robust thermal shell utilizing air source heat pumps for heating and cooling. And so by making that kind of investment in energy efficiency, post apartments will offset 106 tons of carbon emissions annually. We need to keep building more homes like this. Right? It's so clear, right? We need to do it. And what's getting in the way? And I, I just want to offer from my experience and standpoint that there's three things that we can do and three things that we control that can make more housing more likely. One, and we're doing this, and I pre deep appreciation for the folks who are working on this, but we can change the laws and regulations to make building homes the goal rather than something we're trying to prevent. We can, we can change our own negative attitude and rhetoric about growth, about development, about builders and developers, and instead speak with clarity about the essential vitality that is created in a community, in an economy, and for a people when everybody has a home. And We've talked a lot about money and we need the money. We can raise more resources, new resources, grow the pie from those who have more to give. And we can invest that in building homes that will make people in Vermont and, and the communities in Vermont really thrive. You know, getting to today on this particular spot in this particular place with these particular people, it took all those three things and so much more. Um, like others, I'm grateful for the very people who we work with together and the strong and deep partnerships that we have. And I'd like to acknowledge my Evernorth team who's here. I know there's a bunch of you, if you could raise your hands and get a little round of applause, that would be great. And, you know, again, loving, love to work with Champlain Housing Trust and Michael Money and all of his wonderful staff. Thank you to the state legislators, our city councilors, and to the community leaders who advocate for and legislate for affordable housing. Really, any day that we break ground on new safe homes is a day of celebration. And when everybody has a home they can afford in a thriving community like Burlington, our work will be done. So thank you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ned. Oh, Jesus. Uh, thanks, Nancy. And yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Nancy. And um, let me just uh, have my board members raise their hand. Joan, a little higher, please. Oh, that was so unfair. <laughs> we kid, Joan. Um, but thank you, uh, board, for supporting uh, this at every level. Um, the staff, Miranda and her team, Developing this is just a miracle always. I can tell you how many times 
Miranda would come into the office, go, oh, oh. And, but she'd always figure it out and always do the right thing in negotiating and talking with uh, every, everybody that had to work. I, we have actually our CFO person here who actually has got to count the money as it comes in and make sure that the people are staff, but, rem, but, and also the community relations folks are here who put this stuff on. Chris, thank you, and the staff who are here. But right in the middle here are property managers and asset managers and compliance people. And, and they, they do the work. Once this is built, this is, this is the hard part, but once we start getting people in, that's also pretty hard too. And there's a lot of work that goes in. So thank you for being here. And with that, I think we'll take any questions you have. The question is, is the importance of having a place for VFW members to gather when there hasn't been one. So there's a post in Winooski where we have a relationship with where our, we coordinated that um, gathering, but um, it's a good question uh, because it's so incredibly important, which is why we, you know, before this thing even closed, we had a place to land. So there's a, you know, I think it's, what is it, about 3,500 square feet or something like that, that we're gonna, or 2,200 20, square feet, right? So that was, a, that was baked in as a part of the deal before this even closed. We couldn't close this thing unless that was considered. So having a place to land, incredibly important. Where we are until then, uh, definitely, you know, we're gonna be gathering over at in Winooski. Uh, we invite uh, those community members who normally do join us at events uh, to meet us uh, over in Winooski until uh, we get uh, our facility in place. Thanks. Any other questions? Um, this could be for anybody, but obviously it's good to live in the present. But just to look ahead in the future, what does a development like this do for not only for the community, but other housing in the future? Well, well, you know, when I um, when I joke and said we should be doing this more often, I mean we really need to do this more often. Um, we really need to have this kind of like groundbreakings for properties and development. And I know that we are working really hard. I know Evernorth is working hard and other folks in the community in Chittenden County are working hard to get more housing built. So I, it's 38 units. It's important. I got to tell you that every time we do something, it has value. It brings something to the, to the, to the table. People get housed. Homeless people get housed. We just need to do this 10 times more. And, and we have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. So we're hoping that we can do that over the next couple of years. But again, uh, as Nancy said, we're gonna need to have more resources. Hopefully there's a change on the federal level for that. And also hopefully uh, we continue to do that work uh, with a very supportive legislature. And let me just quickly say that I know that the, the guys who are um, here to start construction, I'm holding you up. Is this gonna be, are we gonna, Wright Morrissey, are you guys okay? Wright Morrissey, thank you. Duncan Rosneski, thank you. Uh, Health Center, thank you. Thank you, Taryn and, and uh, Bob. And I saw Michael here, but he wheeled off someplace. But thank you for always being there to support us in the work that we do. When we do these things, we always look for trusted folks to work with, and you guys are great. So any more questions? No? We're doing a photo thing, and I have no idea what happens next. Michelle, can you come? It's your first shovel? It's the first shovel. <laughs> messing my hair. <laughs> what you trying to do, Mark? Messing my hair.
When we broke the ground on the bridge, I kept the shovel and the helmet. No way. Guess, you didn't bring it back? No, I didn't. You should, brought it, you should bring it to every groundbreaking. Okay. Okay. I'm in charge. Look at the building. All right. Let's build. 